Artzuka! Hey, I'm Jeremy. Let's Artzuka. <laughs> Report. Today will be partly cloudy with a slight chance of sun. Unless, of course, a warm wind that ugh, oddly smells of pizza blows this cloud away. I told you it gets sunny. This is no ordinary picture. And these are no ordinary tabs. They look like they're decorations on a simple picture, but they're not just decorations. This one? Moves. Let's make one. Ah. I've got a blue sheet of paper. I'm going to take this piece of paper and with my ruler, draw a line. This line isn't going to go quite to the end of the paper. And then I'll do another one on the other side of my ruler. This will be the track that my cloud moves along. I just need to cut each line. So I'll take my scissors, and very carefully, I'll just cut across like this. There's one there. And now I have my track. But it will be hard for the cloud to slide along this, so I need to cut some more off. That looks about right. And then I'll do this side. Check this out. I've made a cloud for my picture. All I did was take some paper, cut it into the shape of a cloud, then I took some cotton and glued it to the picture. Now I have to attach this to my picture and make it move. If I take this piece of paper and wrap it around like this, that will be able to slide on my track. So to make this really work, I'll just take a little piece of tape, and I'll tape right there. I put the tape on the outside because if this loop is taped to the track, well then it's not gonna slide, it's gonna stick. And I've also made the loop bigger than the track so that it can really slide. Now I have my cloud. I'll take another piece of tape, make a little loop on the back, there we go and then stick it right to the tab. And now my cloud moves. Now I don't want this cloud to come flying off my paper in the end, so I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape and tape the end of my track. And with that tape there, my cloud won't slide off the track. I don't want to have to grab it every time with my fingers. And that's where I thought, let's make a tab. Decoration? I think not. This is a working tab. We're going to disguise this stick with a piece of paper. So I have this long piece of paper here, and I'm gonna place it right underneath my stick, just like that. And that's to make the stick look like a decoration. Now I'll attach this to my piece of paper with tape. And then one other piece right here so that the stick isn't moving around. Now what I want to do is attach the cloud to the stick. We'll turn this picture over so that the cloud is on the back. And I have my loop that moves along the track right here. Well, I'll take this and I'll make sure that the paper is sticking out. And I'll just attach it to the loop. So I'll stick on my tape like this. Now that should do it. And watch. 
it moves. Now it doesn't look like much from back here, but if we flip it around like this, and then place Mr. Sun down right there, It's cloudy, now it's sunny. And then, cloudy again, but sunny again. Now check this out. I made one earlier. I'm going to tell you the secret to this picture. I've rigged other things in this picture to move in the same way. And I've color coded these tabs. The blue tabs actually make them work. And the rest are just decoration. There's two other blue tabs in the picture. Do you see them? Oh, there's one right there. And when I move this one, it makes the tree do a little dance. It looks like the wind is blowing the tree. Can you see where I put the other blue tab? Here it is. And when the wind is really blowing, this happens. Hey! <laughs> Oops. Sorry about that. I didn't know you were in the tub. Make a picture with a cloud that moves, you'll need some paper. I started by drawing and then cutting out two straight lines to form a track. That's what the cloud will move back and forth on. I used a bit more paper to make a ring around the track and taped it together so it slides up and down. Then I cut out more paper in the shape of a cloud and glued on some cotton. I taped the cloud to the ring around the track, then I took a skinny stick and taped it to a strip of paper. I tape the stick to the ring that moves the cloud. The paper decorates the stick so it's disguised. When you turn it over, you can't see the stick. That way, when I pull the stick, the cloud moves. I added more strips of paper to the edge of the drawing as decorations, so you can't tell which one is hiding the stick. We have this project and lots more at Artzuka.com. Art? such thing as closet monsters, but I figure it can't hurt to have my very own monster protector, just in case. Come on, let's make another one. Hmm. I'm gonna make my monster protector from fabric. Now let me show you a neat trick that saves a lot of time. With some scissors, make a small cut into the top of your fabric like this. So I'll do one there, one there, and one there. And now, with those little cuts, we're ready to start to rip. And look, it rips in a straight line. There's two. And there's three. I wanna make a whole pile of these, and I'm gonna use a few different colors. I'll use orange, blue, and turquoise. Once I've made enough, I can start attaching them to my clothes hanger. To attach it to the clothes hanger, I just want to make a really simple knot right at the bottom of the clothes hanger, just like this. Well, there's one right there. I'll make another one, this time blue. I'll tie some to the top of the hanger as well. And when I'm done covering the whole thing, it'll look like this one I did earlier. This will be my monster protector's body. And now for some arms. Now this is really fun. Take two strips of paper. And then we'll lay one on top of the other like that. It's kind of like we're making a big L. What we're gonna do is fold one over top of the other, just like this.
and we'll do the same thing to the other side. And basically, we just repeat this over and over and over until we've folded all of the paper. Once I've folded until I can't fold anymore, it'll look like this one that I made earlier. Huh? Now that I have my arm, I can glue the hand into place. I cut a hand shape out of craft foam, and I attached yellow pieces for fingernails. I can either glue it, or I can tape it. And right now I'll tape it, but if you want it to be super secure, go ahead and use some glue. Now I have a hand. So now I can attach the arm to my protector. I'm going to use a stapler for this. You can also use tape or glue. Now that he has one arm, I'll attach the other. Now that I have the arms in place, I can start adding to his face. Now earlier, I cut out some of these circles. And I have some felt and some craft foam. And then for more detail, I added some feathers to the eyes. I'm gonna tape those right into place. A bit of tape on the back like that. And just find a piece of fabric where it looks good. There's one there. And one right there. Now that's looking really friendly. I have my eyes, how about a mouth? For the mouth, I use some craft foam. And look at these teeth, they're so goofy looking. I'm gonna tape this mouth right onto the fabric. I think there's one final touch to add. Feathers. I took a bunch of these really colorful feathers, tied them together, and now I can tie them to the protector. This guy is ready to be hung up in my closet. And if you don't see any monsters in your closet, you know it's working. Go get them, buddy. To make your own monster protector, you'll need a hanger and some colorful fabric. I made some small cuts at the bottom of the fabric and ripped long, straight strips. Then I tied the strips to the base of the hanger. If you tie a lot of these onto the hanger, it makes a shaggy body. To make arms for my protector, I used two long, colorful pieces of paper that I folded one over top of the other, over top of the other, over top of the other, and kept folding until the paper ran out and it looks like this. Craft foam makes great hands. Tape or glue the hand to the arm to hold it in place. I cut felt and craft foam to make eyes and a mouth for my protector. As an added touch, colorful feathers tied together make a cool headdress. We have this project and lots more on our website, artsuka.com. Artsuka!
Abby, I'm Alex, and I challenge you to make something from bottle caps. You're making it hard this time. Let's see what I can art Zuka. Okay, bottle caps. I know what to do. at it. I like looking at things and seeing something new in them. Take a look at these twigs. I was taking a walk through the woods and I noticed that there are millions of twigs out there. I suppose you knew that already. But here, let's look at them with our Artsuka eye. This may look like a plain old twig, but if you turn it over, it becomes a person. Can you see the arms and legs? Let's make him stand up. I'll use a bit of modeling clay so our little twig man can stand on one leg. Looking good. Let's try another one. <laughs> I think this twig kind of looks like a three-legged giraffe. A tiny bit of modeling clay from my art suitcase will make her stand up too. How about that? She's a little giraffe. Who else is in here? <laughs> this one has three legs too. I love this long neck. This could be the mama giraffe. Let's see what we can do with her. I'll start with modeling clay to help her stand up. Perfect. And then maybe we'll give her a head. She needs some eyes. I'll use modeling clay for the eyes. Yellow on brown, with a black pupil in the middle. Big, bold giraffe eyes. should give her some ears, and these toothpicks are perfect. She needs horns, too. Cotton swabs cut in half make excellent giraffe horns. And now for her nostrils. A few pokes with my pencil, and she's done. Great art created by nature and captured by Artzuka. I'd love to see the stick characters you find and create. Take a picture and send it to me at the Artzuka website, artzuka.com. And now time for an Artzuka safety message. When working with potato stamps, you may not want to stamp your pet pig. Artzuka Recycle Challenge, I challenged myself to make something out of a tea tin and a small yogurt container. 
I put them in a movie starring Paper Bag. Come on, let's see what I made. Oh, and I also put something else in my movie. A plastic container. See if you can spot where I put it. Now, sit back and enjoy Cinema Artsuka. <laughs> Here's the tea tin, and here's the small yogurt container. Can you guess what it's going to be? It's a stove! Now let's see it in a movie. Did you like the movie? I made a stove out of a tea tin and a small yogurt container. Hey, did you spot the plastic container? Take another look at where I put it. I challenge you to make something out of a tea tin and a small yogurt container. Be creative, anything goes. And when you do, take a picture and email it to the Artsuka website. <laughs> Artsuka.com What will you Artsuka today? <laughs>